Hello lovebirds and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So I figured it could be a good idea to do a little bit of a first impressions video and tell you guys all about my trip to Cape Town because apparently this gal is one of the world's worst vloggers ever. So yeah, we've got a few new products in that I want to try out, haven't touched before. So one of them is the new Wired Palette by Urban Decay. We've got the True Portrait Foundation by Kat Von D. Well, it's now KVD Vegan Beauty, if I'm correct. And then we've got Lip Crayons by Lady Gaga. And then I also got in four new blush palettes by BH Cosmetics, but one of them broke in the mail, so I've got three to show you. Uh, so I thought it would be nice to try some of these products out today and see what we think. So first up, skin prep. I am going to go in with Dermashield. I've already moisturized, I've already used all my serums, etc. But I saw a warning on the Wired palette, which says that these four colors are not meant for the eye area. They are able to be applied on the face and body, but they cannot be applied on the eyes. Now, I've seen quite a few palettes with this warning recently. So Huda Beauty, for example, with the neon palettes, I think a few of Anastasia's were kind of iffy to use on the eye area, but it's mainly because it is a pressed pigment. Now, pressed pigments, especially in these tones, tend to seep into the skin and then leave behind a stain, which is not very attractive in the end. So that's why I'm going in with Dermashield to protect the entire eye area from any of those colors seeping into the skin. So yeah, I might be a little bit of a obnoxious person by going in with this palette and using it on my eyes, but that's who I am. So it comes out as a foam, which is just really fun. And then you rub it together until it becomes a cream. And that is what you apply on the eye area. And I always try to go in really thoroughly, especially those little nooks, little corners that usually you might skip go in between the lashes as well, the under eye area, and then leave it for a little bit. So I got in three shades of the Kat Von D True Portrait Liquid to Powder Foundation. I got 12, 15, and 18. Now I tried 12 the other day in store when I was in Paris. So uh, that was it, my playlist. Now I've gone to South Africa, I got a tan, which I'm very, very happy about. And so I figure maybe it's going to be 15 or 18, or maybe the two mixed together. They say to shake really well before use. This is 15, this is 18. Now 18 is slightly more neutral and 15 is slightly more yellow. So I think I'm just going to mix the two together and create a little blend for my skin tone. Now the nice thing is that they do have a harder plastic outer shell, but then this part is squeezable. So I squeeze it a little bit too hard, but you squeeze and get a drop. I'm going to do that with the other one as well. So yeah, I think these two will make for a really good blend on my skin tone at the moment. Just mixing them one to one. So yeah, we went to South Africa on a kind of a agency family trip, which was incredibly nice. Hello lovebirds, welcome to South Africa. You know, being someone who works online and who works on her own most of the time, it is just really nice to be surrounded by all these inspiring women who do kind of the same as what you do, but in a different form, in a different format, but they know what it is to create online. And so we did a lot of brainstorm sessions we did a lot of one-to-one -one talks. 
We were really supportive towards each other, which was incredibly nice to see. Because sometimes you do have some questions, you know, like what could I do better? What could the agency be doing better? What do I think? Or what would I like to see from you? So that was really nice, really, really nice to be able to do for an entire week while enjoying the sun in South Africa. And it was just lovely. Let's get that discoloration around the eye area. You can feel immediately that once it hits your skin, it transforms into a powder and it's really, really, really light texture wise. At first glance, I thought it would maybe be a little bit too pale, but then if I compare it to my neck area, it's actually quite all right. And I was blessed with this beauty right in the center. I'm kind of going over on top to just remove any excess product because I don't want to apply too much, not now that my skin is doing so much better. So, um, yeah, kind of just tapping over it to make sure there's no weird streaks or lines and not too much product in one specific area. First impression for this foundation is that it's beautiful, but I do feel like it's more suitable for people who do have a little bit more oil production during the day because I am really, really dry. So I'm missing some shine, I'm missing some glow, but I can add that with other products later on. So yeah, not bad, not bad at all. To get that dewiness back into the skin a little bit, I'm gonna go in with a cream concealer. Now this is the uh, Essential High Coverage Concealer Pen by Jouer Cosmetics. And I'm just going to press that into the areas where I need more coverage and I wanna hide certain things. Now with a cream concealer, I just love to blend it into the skin. It's really, really nice. With fingers. I forgot to mention that, I think. So we left on the 15th. We went and took a flight in the morning to go from Amsterdam to Cape Town. It was a straight flight, really, really nice. And all the Personal talks already started because I was sitting next to Stephanie, who is amazing, and Sabrina. And, you know, it's just really nice to have the opportunity to talk to your friends for a little bit. So, yeah, that was our flight over. And I think we talked all the way, which is 12 hours. Um, so, and then on the first day, we did a little brainstorm session. So that was the first brainstorm session, just discussing what we were going to do for that week. And then we discussed a little bit about how we are experiencing our agency and what we would love to see changed or what we would like to see improved or any suggestions that we want to make. And then while we were doing the brainstorm with breakfast, we decided that it might be nice for everyone to do a little bit of a, a mind map a uh, brain spider to figure out who we are as creators online and what we want to bring out into the world and present that to each other later on in the week. Then after that, we went to lunch. And then so when we got back from lunch, we started getting ready to go to dinner. But we went to this amazing restaurant called La Colombe. And we had, I think, maybe seven course dinner. And it's really funny because we all have some type of allergy or food restriction. So three of us are vegan, two of us are gluten free, one or two are pescatarian. So it was probably quite a difficult order for the restaurant to comply with, but they did such an amazing job. And we had a wine pairing. So obviously everyone was straight up drunk afterwards. But it was really, really such a nice way to start off that week. There, we've got everything covered that we wanted to cover. Now I'm gonna go in with a little bit of the Uoma Double Take Sculpt and Strobe Stick on a A23 brush by Anastasia. 
I quite love to use this one because it's so, so small and you can just get into the area that you want to get into without blending it all over the place. I'll get back to you guys on a strobing, contouring, non-touring video for next time, but you know, I did want to tell you all about this Cape Town experience and that would not have been possible if I would have had to explain too much. I also want to accentuate the bronziness of this skin, so I'm going in with the Huda Beauty Tentor in Fair. And for me, it's just slightly too warm to use as a contour, so I'd rather use it as an actual bronzer. I know it's supposed to be somewhere in between, but for me, it really is a bronzer, but a beautiful one. So on Monday, everyone kind of woke up with a hangover. So we planned to climb Table Mountain, which I was very much looking forward to. And I figured, you know, I've been working out for one and a half month. I can do this. But then the way I woke up, I was like, hell to the no. And luckily a lot of other girls were staying behind to just be a lazy bone and lay out in the sun all morning. So that's exactly what I did. Deja lady. Almond milk here. And luckily I did because even after half an hour, the first victim came back who was overheated, completely woozy, had to take an Uber back on her own from Table Mountain back to the house. And she was looking pale AF and I was so relieved that I did not go along on that hike, but way to go to everyone who did because that was a challenge. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to powder off using the Chanel Poudre Libre Universelle in 20 Claire, which is a current favorite at the moment. So I'm going to apply it with the A22 brush by Anastasia. I'm just going to tap in the under eye area and kind of the T-zone for now. Now, on the same Monday in the evening, we got ready to go to uh, Clove Street which is a very, very nice, very dark restaurant. And um, I decided to put on my best Jogamu dress, which is the green one from the new collection. And I felt fabulous as fuck. So I did this crazy neon green eyeshadow look with pink blush going really, really up high. And I was wearing some Lee Miller earrings, the dress, shoes by and other stories, and I just felt freaking fabulous. The only thing is, is that it was quite naked, so at some point I got slightly tipsy again. Shh, don't drink, it's bad for you. But I got slightly tipsy, and you get quite wobbly within a very dark restaurant, but I had so much fun. Now, we were supposed to go to a jazz bar in the evening, but at the end of dinner, some of us were lying on the bench, uh, some of us were smoking outside, and we just decided, all very well and fun, but everyone kind of wants to go home and chill at the house, so that's exactly what we did. All right, I'm gonna go in with a eye primer. I'm gonna use the one by Anastasia Beverly Hills because I want these colors to pop really, really well. And I've noticed that this one really protects my eye area from any discolorations, any pigments seeping into the skin. I'm going to use the Refer 01 because it's just a really lovely, fluffy, real hair brush. I do have a discount code if you wanna have Big ass discount, use code Celine. They do have a very long waiting time for their brushes to be shipped, but that is because everything is handmade in Japan. So yeah, if you want them, you gotta be a little bit more patient. And a light layer will suffice to just get a really beautiful base for all the color to go on top of. And obviously we also have the Derma Shield underneath. Next up, I'm gonna go in and try out this Wired palette by Urban Decay Cosmetics. Now I'm gonna do that by pressing it in with a Zoeva 230 pencil brush and then blend it out with the 
P017E by Refer. So, time to do a little bit of a first impressions with the Urban Decay Wired palette. Now, I am someone who likes to go against the grain, and even though there are warning signs on the package, I do want to let you know, I'm going to go in with this color palette because it just speaks to me. I want to try it out. But just to give you a little heads up, it is not meant to be used on the eyes. So just be aware of that. If you're gonna buy this palette, these four are not meant to be used on the eyes, which I am going to do now. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna start off with this bright pink. I'm just going to tap a little bit onto a Zoeva 230 brush and I'm just going to place that right. Okay, I'm loving this already. Placing this right on the center of the lid. And especially with pressed pigments, you don't know where it's going to go. So I really love to just press it in with something like a finger or a dense eyeshadow brush first before I do anything else like blending. I'm loving this shade of pink. It's really, really lovely. Oh, and apparently it is buildable. That's good to know. Then I'm going to blend out the edges using this refer brush. I think it's still on the prototype list, but if I do know the correct name, I'll mention it down below. So I try to leave the center alone and then just blend out the edges so that it can make a beautiful transition with the other shades. I actually quite like it this way, but we're not doing that. So uh, I'm gonna grab onto that slow burn color which is a neon orangey coral and just press that onto the side. Ooh, this baby is bright. Love it though. Let's make this a bit bigger. So on that day where people went hiking on Table Mountain, in the evening we did family night. Now, our agent, the owner of my agency, Lena, she cooked dinner for us and it was incredible. I mean, she made a homemade pasta, pesto, and for some people it was vegan, for some people it was gluten-free, and I don't know how she did it all, but she did it and it was incredible. And then afterwards we had a dance party and obviously the moment I heard Vogue, I just, I just had to. onto switch and I'm gonna place that in the inner corner and it's this oh that's that's Dutch orange <laughs> that would be perfect for King's Day but it's also a very beautiful editorial orange and I can get behind that oh I'm absolutely in love but on the other hand, I don't want it to be, you know, like a three color transition that I've been doing quite a lot le race re recently. So I'm gonna go in with this lilac and I'm gonna place that right above that center so that we can have a pop of color there as well. Now that lilac is slightly darker than what I would have expected. It's a little bit more muted compared to the other shades in the palette, but it is a very beautiful addition to a palette like this. Now to bring back that pink, I'm gonna grab it with the refer brush, which is a little bit more fluffy, and I'm going to add that right above here and blend it into that lilac. I'm gonna intensify that orange just a tad more because I don't want it to get lost all those beautiful purple shades and bring it up a bit higher. I think normally I would mimic this color transition on the bottom, but I think that could get a bit 
boring. So I'm gonna grab onto switch again, which is that bright orange, but I'm gonna place it right in the outer corner because I think a whole lot of brightness could just really work with this. But to keep it surprising, I'm gonna go in with that really dark shade of purple and place it right up against that orange, that bright orange. I don't want to bring it into the center too much because I think then it will start looking clown-esque. But if we blend it in really quickly, yeah, that works. That works, people. I'm getting really, really excited. Then for the final color, I think I'm going to go back in with this one and place it right there. And I think it just adds a bit of rock and roll to have added that purple and a little bit more edge, whilst otherwise it could be a very sweetly look. I'm using a Refer 03 because it's just slightly more tiny than the 230 by Zoeva, so it gives me the ability to work a little bit more precise in this inner corner and blend this baby out a bit into that inner corner orange and into that purple so it's all soft but each individual color is able to pop out so i might just go in and add a touch of extra color in those specific areas to just intensify before moving on with mascara eyeliner everything see the thing for me when working with color is that it should be intentionally bold and with that, all I mean is that if you're going to do color, be very, very direct about it. Be bold about it and just press those colors in like there's no tomorrow. Maybe adjust the shape a bit here and there while you're intensifying all your shades. And finally, I'm going to go in with a Smith Cosmetics 230 to just blend out those outer edges into the skin really, really nicely so that we don't have any harsh lines or anything. On Wednesday, we went to a vineyard. I mean, if you're in South Africa, you've got to visit a vineyard. So we went to a really beautiful vineyard where they did like a picnic lunch, but like a very extensive lunch with wine, obviously, uh, their own local wine and we had dinner, we played charades like Matman, and it's really funny to see everyone's character come out that way, because for example, Claire, who is like perfect wifey and very badass on Instagram, she's just an enormous dog lover. So the only thing she wanted to do was play around with the, the dog, the owner's dog. So that was all she was doing. Then Nicole at some point had a what was it? A grass fringe? <laughs> she looked lovely still, which is insane. And I did a makeup for that day, which was really, really nice. I added a touch of green to her look. I did this kind of a orangey crease. I didn't bring too much color to on my trip to South Africa. Because, you know, if you're at a sunny place, I usually tend to go for more earthy tones, especially with my wardrobe, which was all really really fun um i just keep it a little bit more muted so yeah i think this is it for the eyeshadows i'm absolutely loving it um i'm gonna clean all my brushes first before all the pigments stain the bristles so i'll be right back i'm using a bit of the cinema secrets because it's just incredible i just swirl it around in a little glass creme brulee jar and then I just wipe it off on a tissue and then there you go clean brush again so obviously my agent planned in a lot of free time for us to be able to shoot and it was just hilarious I think if anyone would have contacted boyfriends of Instagram or um was that Instagram is in the wild or circle of idiots that we would have been featured and I've got a lot of really, really <laughs> embarrassing footage. <laughs> going to do a little bit of content creation and since everyone here is on Instagram, it's just really nice because I usually never have anyone to take a picture of me. Look how fabulous everyone is looking. 
of the whole group just walking around in the streets finding a really nice empty wall to be able to do their outfit posts etc and I was definitely one of them and um, Lisa who is a professional photographer she helped me out so much so she did uh, one of my bikini photos she did this really incredible picture on the rock near the beach where I'm wearing this vintage Fendi gala gown that I brought along for God knows what else but content creation. Um, so yeah, I'm, she's just super lovely for helping me out. And that was also kind of nice about going on this all girls trip is that everyone was so supportive of each other, which is not a common thing, I think, in Instagram world. So yeah, that was really, really cool. So I'm feeling this look with lots of mascara, maybe a little bit of a 60s vibe. So I'm just going to curl my lashes, apply mascara, and then see where we end up. I'm also quite loving that natural freckle face I've got going on at the moment. And even with a quite covering foundation, it is possible to let your freckles shine. Going in with the YSL Beauty The Shock Mascara. And this one is quite dry at the moment, which is perfect for packing it on. Well, that's one I done, at least for the upper lashes. It's so funny because now that I look at the camera, this actually looks like a lazy eye compared to this one. So yeah, let's do the other one as well. Now the next day was brainstorm number two. So we all were asked to make a mind map of what we thought was important for our channel and for our community, our personalized community, and what we thought we stood for. And then we had a really nice conversation as well about social responsibilities, about, you know, being someone who's in a position of more attention. So we have the opportunity to do something good for the world and focus our attention on that. So we were thinking about, you know, like um, organizing some plastic whaling trips to do together. And for example, uh, Yara, who is the editor in chief for one of the young women magazines in Holland, uh, she is a partner of the Women's March on the 8th of March, which is really, really nice. And then, you know, there are people who just want to focus on animal and animal cruelty. And then some people who just want to focus on sustainability and uh, reducing their use of plastic. But it was really nice to have a conversation about that and, you know, being aware that there is more that we can do besides showing a really nice outfit on Instagram or besides doing makeup on Instagram or YouTube. So yeah, I was inspired. So inspired that I even cooked my first homemade zucchini pasta yesterday with homemade pesto and it was vegetarian. So yeah, it's fun to see how we can inspire one another to do a bit better for the world. And I'm not going to say I'm a saint because I'm absolutely not. But it does make sure that I make certain decisions in a very different manner. All right, time for bottom lashes. I can't do this with a normal face. It's really, really difficult. Oh, I did get this question this week. I got this question quite a lot. People who've bought this mascara and are like... Okay, so it dries out pretty damn quickly. What do I do? So if you have this mascara and you feel like it's too dry at some point, what you can do is just add a drop of lens fluid and it will be as good as new. And again, I prefer doing this with a drier mascara because it just dries more quickly. So there's less of a hazard of stamping on your skin and it just packs on the volume more quickly so you don't have to go back and forth constantly. Done with mascara. I'm gonna do my brows really, really quickly. Um, I'll be right back because I've noticed that my last video was like 40 minutes. And then <laughs> someone said below my video, 
uh, he or she was like, you said at 21 minutes, so the first thing we're gonna do. So I'm gonna try to narrow it down a little bit more and use time codes below so that you know where to hop on in if you just wanna see a specific thing out of my video. Now on the last day on Friday with the, the last brainstorm on the beach, and that couldn't have been any more perfect. I did burn my scalp again until Stephanie let me borrow her amazing archetype scarf. Um, but yeah, we did a brainstorm in the middle of the beach in Cape Town with the 12 apostles behind us. And it was just magical. Then we went out to dinner because we had to check out of our Airbnb uh, quite early at 10 a.m. So we put all our suitcases at this hotel where we could take a shower before taking our flight. So in the evening, we went to dinner. And you know, 2020 has already been such a whirlwind of a year. And I've been put in front of quite exciting opportunities, but also very difficult decisions. And Stephanie is just one of those angels who just knows how to poke you in the sensitive spot. So I really appreciate her for that because she is a woman of substance and she's such a genuine, kind-hearted person and I really appreciated her help. But she did make me cry during dinner. So, yeah. <laughs> I'm an emotional Aquarius, okay? My brows have been growing like wildfire, especially with a little bit of sun and a little bit of outside air. They just grow like nothing else. Perks of being a hairy girl, I think. <laughs> All right, let me see. I'm gonna go on with the BH Cosmetics uh, little blush cords and um, looking at my eye look. Do I wanna go for this? Oh, that was the vanilla strawberry truffle. Or do I wanna keep it a little bit more soft? This is the vanilla cream truffle. And then we also have the chocolate orange truffle, which could also be quite nice, but I think it might turn out more as a bronzer than anything else. So yeah, I think I'm gonna go for the vanilla strawberry and keep it in a very nice pink family. So I've got the P08 by Refer, and I'm gonna grab onto that really, really, really bright pink and just add it on top of the high point of my cheekbone, because I think it could be nice if we have a slight transition from that eye look to the cheek. And no, nine times out of 10, I really don't have any plan or clue what I'm doing. And I just kind of let the brush take me where it wants to go. And I know that sounds really strange, but it's more like instinct. So I don't really know how to explain why I choose to do it higher up at that point or why I am making certain decisions, because sometimes I don't even know. And it's more instinct than anything else. Yeah, now we need a highlighter. We need a highlighter to finish this off. Let me see what I have in my bag. I have this one by Elon Musk. It's the Oh My God Beyond Powder Highlighter. So let's see how that... That works wonders. Yes, yes, yes. I think a little bit of gold is good to top this look off. A little bit there, a little bit on the bridge of the nose, and a little bit above the brow. I'm gonna go back and forth between the two sides so I can make a transition with that pink and that gold. So gold, pink transition, gold. There. Ooh. Right now in Holland, they are celebrating carnival. And I think if I would go outside with this makeup look on, they think I would have dressed up for carnival. I'm absolutely fine with that, by the way. So now, because I've put so much emphasis on all that pink color, I kind of want to keep the lip muted. So I got this Le Monster Matte Lip Crayon by the Lady Gaga, and I'm just gonna see if there's a nice muted pink in there. Maybe something a little bit more nude. Maybe something like this. So it's just more my natural lip shade instead of going for hot pink. I 
think I'm going to go for this one. It's a little bit more compatible to that shade. And I think I'd like to emphasize that a little bit more versus the pinkness again, because we've also got pink, pink. So I kind of want to balance it out. Ooh, that is buttery. I don't want to do a full lip. I don't want to do a full painted lip. So I'm just going to tap in the color to make it look like more of a Korean kind of lip. And that is kind of what I love about full coverage lipsticks is that you can go in so many different directions without applying too much product. The nice buffed out lip, I think, would suit this look really nicely. And especially if you're blotting everything out, it's okay to cross the border of the lip line a bit because it looks more like a flush in the lip area than anything else. I could use a bit more there to balance it out. I think I've said this before, but my lip is slightly crooked. So this area is a little bit more voluminous, vo voluminous than this side. So I drag this side down a bit more and then I drag this side up a bit more. And if you feel like you've gone a little bit too far, which in this case, I do feel like I've gone over the top lip a little bit too far, you just grab onto a concealer brush and just push it down a bit so it stays within the perimeters of the actual lip. Now, the one thing that is kind of missing is a little bit of dew and a little bit of glow, but in a dewy fashion. So I'm gonna grab the Chanel Bomb Essential in Sculpting. I'm just going to add a touch of dew onto that cheekbone. Maybe a little more. But it's just the way the light is being reflected with a powder highlighter versus a cream highlighter is such a difference. And I have noticed that I do like that dewiness a lot more versus a powder highlighter. See, it just makes a little bit of difference. And in my mind, a lot of difference. Now, one thing I really love to do to finish up a product is use a toner spray as a setting spray. So this one is by Witloff, which is the Clean Dutch Beauty again. And then I figure, you know, it's skincare. Never hurt anyone to put a little extra skincare on top. So we'll let that dry. I need to get one of those fans and be like... Tuk, 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 tuk. All right, lovelies, there we have it. A little first impressions video and a lot of talking from my side. If you have any questions about the palette, about the foundation or the lip crayons, please let me know down below or send me a direct message on Instagram. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye. Fijne dag jongens. Thumbs up if you like it. And uh, subscribe. Bye!